Sorry, welcome to the fourth part of the tractor construction set, August 30, Wednesday meeting. The reference page for today is the tractor construction set 2017 page. <clears throat> and that page has been seeded with the actual development template, which tracks all the development steps of a complete development proce process. Now, in fact, <clears throat> since Lex is joining the team, we've talked about a lot about getting a proper burn down for a certain project. And with the development template, simply by putting the level of completion in column number three, uh, the development template looks like there's the deliverable, there's the link to the work product, and one to 10 for this level of completion in the pink column. Uh, but when we fill that out as we go along, you can track that over time, parse this spreadsheet. You can simply, in the simplest instance, you can parse the spreadsheet using some software and uh, you can Python it up or whatever and generate an ongoing burn down graph from this that we can embed into this project page so we, we know where we're at with progress. So that would be good. But seeded the formal development template. This is tractor version 1710, build happening sep October 27 through 29. Uh, that's when it's all going to happen. We're building heavily upon the work, prior work, and it's not bad at all. The work we've done, the traction system works. I mean, that's been proven. Only the, the thing that we have to develop for this time is some of the geometrical issues, like I mentioned in some of the previous meetings, that the tractor that we built, the, the track tractor, small micro track that we built, was just too tall. So reevaluating that, we can totally shrink it down by, because pretty much the power cube was sitting on top of the tracks, and this time around, we can make it such that the power cube sits in between the tracks. So uh, I just went down there to take some measurements and I'll share those with you right here. So uh, I'm gonna share the photos. Ah, sorry, uh, record the screen here. I am recording the screen, you can watch this in the recording, but um, so let me record the, sorry, share my screen. In Google Photos, today I took just took a few pictures, and I'm gonna add, add them to an album so everyone can see it. And it would be the new album, Tractor, Tractor V17.10 for October. Okay. So let me share that link in the chat. Yeah, Roberto, if, if you still may, the, what I asked you to do was on the tractor construction set page, if you can start a working document for today, you can copy the old one and make a copy of the old one and, and uh, put that, paste that into the today's entry, which is... Uh, you look at tractor construction set there's Wednesday August 30 2017 part 4 if you can paste that uh, so we have a working document for today as I as I speak here and others join now let's take a look at the tractor construction set here the tractor so relevant pictures so I'm taking a few pictures of the tracks and an actual uh, small tractor like like here for example this, this is a good picture here so that's behind the tractor you see the the track on one side the the non-symmetric track on the other side here's the body for reference if you go to uh, bulldozer there's some pictures of what that thing looks like when I was doing the micro track uh, but this is <clears throat> That's what I'm showing there, this device right here. I was just doing some load tests, like here I was carrying 6,000 pounds of dead weight just to show that it can happen and so forth. Uh, that's kind of the design from before, but once again, it's geometry is not right. Um, so concept being here that on this, you see how tall the power cube is? That's almost as tall as a person. That's maybe like five feet tall altogether. So way too high for safety. And because the power cube here is sitting on top of the tracks and we can slip it in in between the tracks and we can get the, the geometry that we've done before to actually work out with the existing power cube. 
So given that the power cube is turning out to be 20 inches wide, we can absolutely do that and, and get re-inspired on this existing platform to make it work for the next, next iteration of the tractor for October. So we still have the parts for this. This is all intact. We have this so I can do some early prototyping and put a, one of our small power cubes on this and see if that, I mean, li literally just taking off the large power cube that's on it right now, putting on a small one, we can actually make this work for a pretty practical tractor now, minus any of the implements such as your loader arms. So step number one would be to rapidly prototype this version using this, this the platform that already exists. That's something that can be done on a time scale of a day. And we can actually have a nice, very, very short, uh, short profile, not tall, as in not tall, tractor. And let me show you some of the dimensions here. Like I took the critical point. Um, let me see where where is that here. Let me reverse this order. Sort photos newest first. So in um, <clears throat> in this, look at this here. What I'm showing here in this picture right here, let me make it central, this picture, what I'm showing is the actual height uh, of 38, uh, that's where my finger is holding, but 38 is the height of that tractor when the power cube is sitting in that gap right there. So 38 inches, that is excellent, that's absolutely acceptable for a workable tractor. Now here what you see is that with a big power cube it's basically the beginning, uh, the bottom of the power cube where that 38 inches is. So we're gonna be pretty good to go. What I would suggest therefore is that we go forward right with the existing parts that we have just to prove prove the concept of the um, the size and, and the power cube and everything working so that we can go from there. Now this platform uh, has the non-symmetric tracks as I mentioned, uh, if you go here, you see that one track is, um, you know, one track is the forward side, one the other side is the back side. Um, they're not, you know, they're non-symmetric and so forth, but we can fix that. Um, okay, so that's that's the main discovery. I'm gonna go through a couple more details here. So the tracks have these idlers. These are actually about 12. In, these this is just a pipe section. That's a pipe section, and around that you weld a disc and you bend out the disc with a big pipe wrench and you put on this this bearing that's a three inch shaft right here we're, you're looking here that's three inches that's a big bearing three inch bearing 75 millimeters or so um very solid i mean this would scale to large you know this this a three inch shaft would scale to 10 or twenty thousand pound machines and this is just the mere micro tractor which is super overbuilt. So basically what we're saying here is that we build a basic tractor that's very heavy duty that can be part of a larger machine like if we scale this up. So that's one thing to note. You see the chain, this chain's got pins. The detail on the on the drive, so here let's see how, how come it's not popping up here. I should... Okay, well that thing doesn't... Okay, I'm looking at this picture right here, the sprocket. Um, the sprocket is an eight tooth sprocket. We can use that. That's this here is on a, uh, once again driven on a three inch. This is on a three inch shaft, and we're using both three inch and two inch for for both sprockets and idlers. And actually, this this is a different micro tractor that we have in the shop, and that's actually got a two inch shaft and a smaller idler. This is actually an eight inch idler, so altogether it's twelve inches across here. So we did two versions. One is the smaller smaller uh, track set which had the like a 12 inch idler and another one that had the 8 inch idler the 8 inch idler is shown here with a with a 2 inch shaft going through it here it's an 8 sprocket the sprockets were always the same with a 3 inch shaft driving the sprocket from the motor so that's just some details um, okay notable thing look at this thing so this is a on the, um, the micro track that I'm on this micro uh, this is on this micro track here no, actually it's not, it's the other one. Doesn't matter. Um, point being, I want to point you to this part right here, or this part right there, or this part right here. Clamps, look at that. We do not have a keyway in that shaft. We're just clamping that drive sprocket onto the shaft, so it's absolutely modular. 
you can put a bigger sprocket on and so forth so this makes it 100 percent modular it's um i mean it's pretty amazing stuff if you think about it for quick exchange because you take off those well i actually have to take off those eight bolts or just loosen four of them on one, on one side and this drive sprocket comes off so for quick exchange so look at the possibility that can happen here if you take the lower so this chain is driving the lower lower wheel this is the track drive uh, well the track is driven by the sprocket that's that's it it's got a lot of traction here with the flat pads you don't have a lot of traction because uh, I mean you have a relatively decent traction uh, let me see so working document is that for part four excellent love it let's go right in there and so to take some notes uh, so the part four document uh, August 30 okay I'm gonna get in there that's good thank you uh, continuing on the just here the traction here with the flat pads they're just pretty much riding on the ground uh, they're not aggressive like you can put teeth on them in other words just a bar across so you get more grab on the floor but what I wanted to show is that this is all clamp on so that the sprocket can be exchanged now think about this we talked about in the in the day num part number one uh, universal wheel units which can have tracks tracks or wheels so this point right here um, trying to highlight it and emphasize it okay that point there tracks or wheels how do you do that um, see, let me get oriented here that's the old one that's the old one how do you do that so on this think about this if you took off this idler here and put on a regular wheel hey that would be a a tractor with a wheel well except here that's just an idler so you'd have to have the track drive the chain drive the actual wheel but basically you can put a wheel on this shaft here and you can be driving that wheel so the promise of of replacing this track with a wheel is right there you take off this idler and put on your driven wheel uh, and in this configuration you you would have the drive sprocket and the chain it wouldn't be a, a track it would be just one of these chains we can make those that would drive a wheel so you can readily convert between a, a track drive and a wheel drive which would be once again pushing the limits of modularity that does not exist out there in the world nobody's doing that uh, but it is I, I mean we're discovering it's I think it's decently practical say you want this one tractor you don't want to use tracks on it because uh, you want to go far and fast uh, or just you want to transport this thing far while well, you put on a wheel up to this machine um what else here what else are some notable point this is the actual tube for the idler that's the eight inch it's about eight and a half that's called eight inch schedule 40 pipe that's just what we're using uh, that's that's what makes up the small idler. now this is the three inch bearing here now this bearing uh, we would like to use this small idler everywhere but you see this bearing you cannot bolt it through like the middle of this um, so you can't attach the bearing to this one because the three inch bearing is too big but you can put the one and seven eighths bearing the call it nominally two the two inch bearing you can put onto the smaller idler so we had the two versions one where we used the three inch uh, bearing we used the 12 inch diameter uh, pipe which means that the bolts would go through the middle of that and you can fun it could function as an idler in other words this this uh the four hole bolt mounting pattern has to go through the inside of the of the pipe in order for this uh to to be workable as a system so what else um more notes skipping back to the power cube here i, I took some measurements so we we're ending up at 20 by 20 by 31 33 here's the actual measurement see this measurement here that's that's I'm looking at the top of the power cube the new one that we just built version 17.08 33 inches a little over 33 um, 
I'm noticing here that on the right hand side we can trim three inches because the pump has about three inches in the back so we can trim th from 33 go down to 30 about because you can take off maybe three and a half so let's say we got 30 so 20 20 30 for a power cube not bad and the point to note uh, as far as fitting that power cube inside um, let's see let's give you that dimension where is that the point was that the distance between the two wheel sets in the on the tractor the micro track here if you want to put the power cube in between the two uh, two two motors there's 28 inches of space so this motor is on one side and this motor is also on the other side front and back of the the tractor uh, here's oh yeah here's the picture you can not hardly see it but what I'm showing there is that in this one highlighted uh, the distance between the front and back drive motor is 28 inches so we're like two inches short of fitting a power cube in between there so basically what we can do uh, if we want to use this current this frame here uh, we'd have to extend it by four inches like just a little extension and then we can make it work to accept the power cube so for so perhaps for in the interim what I would be able to do would be to uh, just weld on the motor just just to show that everything is working and we have a nice short um, tractor and from that we would want to go on to design the loader arms so if we have workable loader arms on this then becomes then this this thing becomes uh, turns from just like a traction device where you can pull things to a real workhorse where you can put implements on the front loader anything from like augers to trenchers to a front loader so a front loader is very useful you can do earthworks move soil around dig ditches like basically do some landscaping and stuff um, so that's good um, well that's about all on the pictures I have this is um, this is in this one here is the old tensioner it's not too bad it's this it's this bent one inch threaded rod that pulls on the front so like right here and that pulls the tightness on the tracks so one on each side uh, bolt uh, it's not spring loaded so it's just stiff it works uh, here's another use of the clamping so this clamp here prevents this shaft from slipping axially meaning this direction that I'm moving right now uh, so that's that's basically a DIY collar <clears throat> consisting of slit in half three inch pipe heavy wall pipe which is actually drawn over mandrel tubing it's a very heavy wall tubing uh, slit put these wings on them and bolt them together clamp them together so we're good to go and here's uh, some of the more of the motors these are the motors that are actually used in this system they're 15,000 inch pounds very very strong uh, enough to get you on this micro track right here that I'm showing it's got 7,000 pounds of pulling force um, that is probably five times more than the Toro Dingo so actually we're highly exceeding the industry standard here on this small machine um, because of the huge torque we have if you do the calculations for how much torque you get or pulling force you get from this 8 inch sprocket driving the system uh, you'll see it's about 3500 pounds per side so 7000 pounds total for a, a two motor micro track let's go to the working document and talk about roll division and work to do so uh, so review still stands this is um, this is still accurate we we want to do yeah this is still still relevant we keep going with the Toro Dingo uh, type of concept so that's what we have ourselves we talked about frame flat platform rotor idlers tracks tensioning that's what we need uh, frame dimensions so we we updated this to say that this is now between where the tracks are 20 inches uh, that ma that works out 
In fact, we have some to spare. I'm going to go back to the picture and a space between is actually not showing it. I believe it's I showed that space between the tracks to be actually 24 inches. Oh yeah, right. This picture right here. That's the space between the tracks and it, I'm showing there it's uh 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21. It's 21 between the here, so it's actually like 22, 23, about 24 inches between the tracks, so we can easily fit the power cube now that we've got the 20, 24 inch. Uh, so, so given the given these encouraging results, we can go to the CAD and continue. So, let's uh, continue here. So, 20 inches could be the space. Um, let's see, this one, tensioner, right, here's the Ahmed tensioner, let's cut number five out. This is good, so somehow put a, put a mechanism as such. Now the question is how are you going to lift that, because you need a lot of force to lift that, so you have to work out some mechanism to make it lift. You can possibly do something like, uh, like maybe a bolt like mount like a threaded bolt that would actually tighten and pull so I'm, I'm gonna draw that there um, do some kind of a pull puller maybe like a bolt tensioning bolt or something that pulls this arm upwards uh, and it would be good if it's that center could be there or the center could be like underneath like right under the frame because there's space there too so that center is acceptable. If, if, if it's there, then it's going through the frame. Uh, it's probably easier to make it go under the frame, because if you go through the frame, you have to torch out a, what I would suggest there is a two-inch shaft that goes all the way through the tractor from one side to the next. And then go to the loader arm mounting, so whatever the geometry you select. So now um, we know a little bit more information. We've got a power cube that's sitting in there. And as I mentioned, the whole distance, so this is actually 20, 20 inches wide uh, and 20 inches tall, uh, but it's kind of long. It, it's going to be, minimum is going to be, as I mentioned, 30 inches, 20 inch, so we can say 20 inch by 30 long. Uh, and we can say 20 by 20 by 30 long. Uh, now, the cool thing here is that, as I mentioned, the height is going to be 38 inches. That's excellent. Uh, to the top of the power cube. So now we can wor worry about how we attach the loader arms. So next steps. So let's see, what can we cut out? Um, let's cut out this, doc this part. We don't need it. Um, here's the requirements. Here's the potential tension, tensioning of the tracks. Here's the loader arm mounting, potentially. Okay, so let's go to current work now. So, slide, duplicate slide. So let's let's talk about design. Um, actually drawing this out. Concept concept design. Well, part library, like start starting on a part library. Ah, I can call it concept. No, let's call it part library creation because now we're ready to create the part library for this tractor and we can divvy that up between all the people so um, let's see who else is on here do we have anybody we're like we don't have anybody do we just Roberto uh, or am I something not showing here for me oh whoa oh you can't okay you can't access the photos I guess the default setting is uh, share. Okay, the default setting there is not good. So we gotta do sharing options. Share. Okay. Uh, try now if you can do it. It should work now. Okay. Um, right, and then when you click on it, it yeah, I was in, still in edit mode when I was doing that, so it wasn't showing up. Okay, 
Um, so you can take a look at this. So what we want to do is cat up this existing thing. So the universal rotor and everything else. And um, But because we want to have the symmetric track drive for reasons of practicality, like what I said about fitting a power cube on this, we can do that just like as a proof of concept, but we want to have the symmetric track drive, which means we don't want to use this long, long um, drive axis, but instead use just the motor, none of this other stuff, which means that we will mount, so here's the mounting, so here's basically the motor, okay, let's look at this picture in detail to explain how the motor is mounted, so this is the motor on the left hand side, uh, it has this plate with bolt pattern, so it's, it's a motor that comes, uh, whatever that motor c is dedicated for, it, it it can mount a wheel on it, but the way, so we use that wheel mounting pattern to mount this whole double chain coupler assembly as a super high torque way to couple the shaft to this high torque motor. So what we can do now is instead of doing this coupling and the bearings here, we drive the sprocket, we attach the sprocket directly to this. So instead of this plate here, which is which is now that like the chain coupler plate, we will put the sprocket right here. So the motor ends here. This is uh, the motor motor shaft. Over this motor shaft is this round plate. Um, that's like a yeah. It's it comes with the motors. You can buy that off with the motors. Um, let me show you that on surplus center. I don't know if surplus center has it. No, but definitely the wiki has this as the hydraulic motors. The specs for this motor are on the wiki. Uh, if you want to take a look at that, uh, not here. It's a 45.6 cubic inch hydraulic motor. That's that's what it is shown here. Um, let's see if it appears on surplus center. No, they, they don't have it anymore. It's out of stock. But uh, if you go to 45.6. I wanted to show the the plate that this doesn't show. Oh yeah, here it is. You can see in this thing, that's the plate that goes over the shaft. That's another part. And that's how the motor looks all together. If you could zoom that in, but you probably can't. Um, so this plate goes on top of this. So this plate, on top of this plate, we would mount the sprocket directly. So and just use this motor with a simple mounting plate. So the idea is take this motor, put this, um, put this, still put this, this wheel plate on, and directly onto this wheel plate, put on the drive sprocket. And that way we can, we can uh, avoid the very long, large structure here, like this whole universal rotor being, uh, having its own bearings we can eliminate that um, for the purpose of having a tight compact tractor available to us here this is good as the universal rotor because now we can directly attach different implements to the rotor if you don't have these large bearings here then you can break off the shaft of the motor these bearings here um, these two bearings this one here and this one there they're the nominal two inch bearings uh, they provide the stiffness to this this shaft here, and here I just put a bunch of these clamp collars on, so that you don't have axial motion. Uh, because these are not like there's this is a plain shaft. There is no no seats on that shaft. That shaft could slip in and out. So I'm just using these to to do the axial loading. And because the tracks are on the ground and this sprocket is not driving things directly, like namely the ground, the axial torque on this motor is very low, so it's acceptable. The axial torque, the high axial torque would be would happen on the actual idlers, which have uh, the larger clamp collars on them, like which you saw underneath the tractor which was 
Let me show you that again. So axial loads are going to be high on the... These are... This is the thing that's actually holding this clamp here. This is a powerful clamp that holds the axial motion, uh, maintains the axial stability of the of the drive wheels like this shaft is not going to move back and forth here because it's held by this clamp one on each side uh, of the tractor so what you're noticing here is that we're just using plain shafts no keyways clamps interchangeable parts so totally different than most things that happen uh, because we're using three inch shaft here and these um, three-quarter bolts I mean this is very powerful it's got I went through like all the calculations like clamp force of all this stuff it's on the order of tens of thousands of pounds so in theory this should not move and so forth so you can look at the older tractor design documents and tractor genealogy to um, uh, the, regarding the work on a bulldozer from two years ago to, to see more of this action um, the actual design process so Getting back to this document, so part library creation. Let's create a part library. So we talked about loader arm design here. So different parts, so parts. Um, let's go through the parts, the platform. Um, comment that we can make right now is you can probably use uh, just by what I observed in real life, I mentioned the power cube is now about two inches too long to fit. Or not. No, actually, we got to go from scratch. You take the platform. How you design a platform. The requirements are, for the platform, it has to be long enough to, to hold a power cube. So these would be pl platform requirements. Um, long enough to hold the to hold power cube, thirty inch long by twenty by twenty. Um, it has to be wide enough, wide enough for the power cube. It has to be such that the overall width does not exceed Toro Dingo. So whatever. The, uh, if maybe if you can look up what the specs what's the width of the Toro Dingo base tracks I think it's 42 inches um, but we want to shoot for that industry standard as a tight compact machine um, so I can erase this other stuff here so that's the platform just the nominal platform here So, people, the general idea here is we've got two months here. Uh, September, we're at August 30. September, October 27. That's about nine weeks away. And we've got the build at that time. And we're going to kick some butt on it. So, what we're doing for the next two months is... Um, what I want to do is try to kind of have all the people on our team be become product owners of one part of the tractor so we can follow up consistently and make sure that all the necessary design work gets done. We'll, we'll continue filling out the development template, the development spreadsheet, and we're going to go through all the different steps like instructionals and, and bills of materials. So we'll all go through that whole design process for this uh, in, over the next two months and um, I am seriously looking at adding the the gasifier to that we have the gasifier sitting in a shop the worst case scenario if we don't get to build a new one we can use the old one that works and we have to connect it to the engine so we can demonstrate that we're running this tractor on a gasifier using charcoal 
And the third part is designing the solar power cube so we can go slow using solar power. So a very tiny power cube that's just attached to a solar panel. So right now, because we're in good shape on the tracks and this, this design work, we can do those. Those are simply additional modules that if any new person arrives on a team, we can get them on those parts immediately. And hopefully we would have enough time to design a couple of implements. Like I'd like to see if we can actually get a backhoe attachment uh, in the next two months. I mean, we've built those before. We know how to do that. It just takes the design sitting down on FreeCAD to make it happen. So we're going to go very ambitious. It's this crazy eco tractor build, which can be both solar powered and charcoal powered. And it's uh, because we have Salam on the team. He knows robotics. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is um, we're looking at adding the GPS and automation to this tractor so we can actually computer vision. So we can have, uh, like, say you have an acre garden or something like a, a thing that you want to do for a market garden or even for your personal home. Like I could definitely see that in the future, uh, the production gets decentralized and people are doing things because there's access, to, uh, ready access to high tech. People can do like, here's my garden robot, here's whatever, uh, you know, just assistance. Like the humans working together with machines. Like like a lot of people are afraid of uh, machines taking over the world or automation and artificial intelligence. But I think the more relevant case we should be thinking about is how do we actually work together with humans and non-humans alike. Uh, like as in human augmentation so that we can we can uh, have additional powers so at the end of the day we focus on what's important to us. So this is the context with which I'm thinking about this for us right here. Uh, one practical application, if this actually works and we have an automated one, one acre garden that we can actually manage because we don't have to spend long hours weeding and I mean weeding primarily is the thing that kills you there. Um, when you have a little autonomous thing that's just going on solar power that's just doing the work for you that's that's a good idea that's a big idea and it's like technology is all out there to to be able to do that so to distribute that technology throughout the world as open source i think makes a lot of sense and it could help a lot of people uh of course using of course we have to use technology wisely because you know we have crazy technology today but it's not being used wisely so we always have to be wise about it uh, but just getting back right to this, uh, part library creation with does not exceed Toro Dingo. Um, this holds the holds the motors on one side, holds the two motors, two drive motors. Um, okay, so that's the and then of course you attach. What else needs to happen? You attach the idlers to it. attach the tensioner to it uh, what else attach the loader arms uh, a person can walk behind it or sit on a platform so maybe you attach a platform to this um, person walks behind or rides on a platform so did I miss anything for the requirements of the, this platform? Uh, I don't know. But it's going to be, uh, well, the first thing is use the, the quarter inch by four inch square tubing, square hole tubing, the stuff you did for the FreeCAD test. Let's do that. Now, we also have uh half inch wall tubing also exists uh we don't have to do that we, we we can do one quarter inch but just for your reference the half inch wall we also have that for now we can stick to quarter inch now the half inch wall that would be for very heavy duty machines now if we're talking about a 16 horsepower tractor with 60 the quarter inch totally does it if we're going to stack a few of these together to make a 64 horsepower tractor, the quarter inch still will do it. It's pretty strong. And if we have the capacity in FreeCAD to do finite element analysis, you can see the building, bending forces. Like we, we can get into that as we move forward on FreeCAD to actually do computer, computer analysis of what the strength of the 
tubing is how much it will it bend when you're when you this tractor weighs so much or it's got such a load on it or something so we can do that within FreeCAD um, that capacity is there okay so that's um, platform so that's that's that thing I'm gonna erase the wheels here the platform from the side looks like looks like this and from the top I think the easiest thing to do, so that's kind of how it would look from the side, from the top, I think we can do something like, uh, which we talked about before, just three bars, something like that, um, I mean we don't even need the third bar, I mean probably the even the simplest, very very simplest would be just this. But we could do different versions of this, like, uh, why do we have three bars before? Because we needed to attach the universal rotor to it, which requires three, because it attaches on two points. But here we can possibly do something like this, maybe. I don't know, maybe one in between here. That would work. But the, the one from before was like this, it was three of them, as we discussed before. So, this is what we used before, and that worked. Um, I mean, the, the idea here is what's the lowest, uh, lowest, I mean, simplest that we can do to achieve the task. I mean, would this be sufficient enough for a uh, 2,000 pound, not a 2,000 pound, probably this micro tractor is going to weigh like a thousand pounds altogether, maybe 1,500 pounds, uh, but that would be, I would guess that would be probably strong enough right there, you can try something like that. So the thing is, uh, once we build this, once again, like we talked about the workflows within FreeCAD, if we find that we need some other features in this platform, we can, we can uh, do that, but for now, we can, I think we can just try, try this thing with, uh, of course, the fact that if need, need needed, we can readily upgrade to some other versions of this within FreeCAD. So, so that's platform. Now the platform, uh, in order for it to make sense, you have to fit all the other parts to it to actually verify it. Um, but if we're dividing all this work up, as soon as we create the platform, we, we leave it in, um, let's see, sketch form. Like, no, we are using the tubing from the tubing library so we can import the different lengths of tubes and and they they come in four inch increments so we have the whole tubing library and that would mean that we we simply import or merge the tubing into a document and create different versions of this but we should start with something as a working platform so that we have a thing to hang on to hang other parts onto it so let's get on to the other parts. So duplicate the slide. So there's the platform. Let's talk about idlers. So, so idler requirements. That's the three inch shaft um, because this will allow, allows us to be scalable fully like two large machines like 10 ton machines. Three inch shaft for idler use the once again the 12 inch like what I was showing you about the 12 inch uh, idler uh, like we did before. Do a uh, Mounted the same as last time. Mounting is via a plate. Use like uh, what's what's standard is we work on a four four inch grid pattern. So do something like an eight inch. Eight inch would allow you to get two bolt holes in there. Say eight inches by eight inches would be the minimum. Uh, probably more like eight by sixteen inches. But whatever plate is a um, 
Um, that plate is one half inch, and it's eight one half inch by eight inch by something like about I mean I would say about 10 inches or or so let's say 10 inch enough to just put the that hole in there for the for the shaft the shaft does not spin in a plate on a plate the bearings are what spin so you can look at the old documents so that would be um, let's see so we did some various configurations here there's the I mean there's the document right there on this page if you go to the bulldozer page there's uh, calculations design notes you can look at all the stuff on the idlers and everything else over there in these old documents and here we we did a development template and we had some of these um, some of these filled out like you see the 10 it means it's all filled out and so forth so we were at 17 17 percent done um, that was the working document and so forth um, but yeah definitely refer back to the bulldozer design document to uh, so we can close this one so I'm gonna put down refer to 2014 wait was that 2014 that might have been 2015 bulldozer doc I think that was 2015 yeah two years ago which is Now, the idlers, once again, refer to the design doc. inch idler uh, so use I mean replicate uh, 2015 design we're done do that um, I think that's all we need to say on that Rep replicate the 2015 design because they work and do the 12 inch version not the 8 inch version Let's call it the 12 inch pipe section the pipe the round part is 12 inches um what else here uh that's it next i don't know what else to say about it duplicate slide so let's go to the idler tensioner So that we here we're evolving the 2015 design. So do the Ahmed design. From session three. From tractor session working meeting three. Uh, for that, the way you mount it, make the shaft, make the shaft. pivot uh, make that a two inch shaft when I say two inch I, I always mean one and seven eighths and why did we go to one and seven eighths it's a common size that you can get but also it fits we did that because it fits inside two inch schedule 40 pipe uh, two inch schedule 40 pipe or maybe it's actually I don't know what what pipe is it might be schedule 80 but but the, the, we did it because we can make easy collars from pipe for it when we were when you're doing various designs when you want to put a collar on that so that's why we used one and seven eighths and two inch would not fit a two inch pipe like a two inch pipe would not fit the two inch size 
So one and seven eighths is a loose fit around two inch pipe. That's that's just historically why we used one and seven eighths, and that that seems to be working well for a lot of things, which is why we just use pretty much for everything you saw. When I say two inch, I mean one and seven eighths, and that's what we've been working with. <laughs> Make shaft pivot one and seven eighths. Yeah, create some tensioner, some some tightening mechanism to get that thing uh, tensioned. What I would suggest for that the roller that's there, I would also suggest using one of the eight inch. Do the one one of the eight inch uh, pipe. Create a roller. So, so that thing has to roll, the, the, that tensioner thing, if you look at this here, let me get this professional design on this page here. <laughs> so right there, whatever that roller is, so I'm going to draw that roller in there. What I would say is just make that one of the 8 inch, make that an 8 inch, um, eight inch roller so that means eight inch pipe the eight inch pipe that we have with two bearings just like basically the which is the same as the idler so essentially we're replicating the idler from the the eight inch version so I could write essentially replicate a an eight inch idler so here uh, in this version that we're doing here we're doing the 12 inch idlers here a little bigger so that would be be like a little bigger there maybe not that big but that would be that something like that around there that's the here that's 12 inch this is the 8 inch but since we already know how to do that 8 inch idler thing we just use that why not and then see what would happen in order for this to be a, a stiff a nice uh, nice connection um, this thing has to go straight like when it tensions it has to go straight up and down easiest way to do it would be if you put a shaft between the two sides so that it's uh, confined well and that shaft is just fixed so maybe like if you look at from the top I'm going to draw the top view of this what I would suggest for stability like symmetry is a good design principle everywhere in nature symmetry is biomimicry you want to use symmetry whenever possible so so looking from the top if that's the tractor uh, with the tracks it's got the tracks on the sides What I would do, so, so, okay, the first thing to note is that the idler shafts everywhere, they go for the wheels, they go through the whole frame. They go through the whole thing. Why? Two point, two point attachment, it's stability. So you got those shafts, they're a little thicker than probably they should be. So that's the first thing to know. They they span through the whole thing. I would suggest the same thing for the idler. So that say the idler is going to be there. Make it go through the whole thing. And that's an easy way to make an attachment. As opposed to trying to do like this one thing on one side, one thing on the other. It can be a nightmare to make that actually stand up straight. Whereas if you if you do this, then the tensioning mechanism could actually be a lifting so I'm going to make a point there. That, so in order to tension that, you have to lift that bar. And it would be easy to lift that bar by just jacking it up through some kind of a tensioner right here. Now, this is safe because this, once again, this bar does not spin. None of these bars spin. What spins are the actual idlers themselves, the two bearings on the, on the idlers. So I'm going to put a note there that this can be lifted for tensioning.
Okay, so that's uh, that's a design challenge there. Because what happens there, that has to not interfere with the power cube. If we did it this way, then... Um, I mean, the power cube still has to go here, so you can see how there's conflicts. Like, the power cube needs to go in, in here somewhere. Uh, so, so, maybe we put the idler... So, that's power cube. Um, that tensioner, because that power cube is probably going to be here, I would put that tensioner all the way up front. Um, in other words, you have the drive in the back, but the tensioner is going to be all the way in the front. That's what could work. Okay, so idler tensioner. Next, real quick. Uh, slide, duplicate slide. Now let's talk about power cube mounting. Power cube mount. And that has to be carefully designed. Like, how do you exactly do you mount it? Is it like a bolt connection through the bottom of the power cube frame? In which case, we got to put bolt holes in the bottom of the power cube frame that are at a specific spacing of four inch intervals based on an interval spacing of the holes and uh, tubing that we have. So, so power cube requirements. Oh, I should probably share this document. It's probably not shared, so you guys want to... Uh, no, anyone can find and edit. That's good. Excellent. Good job. Main considerations are um, the motors, tensioner, idlers. Well, the idlers are on the bottom, so they won't inter interfere. Motors, tensioner, loader arms fit around it. Fit with it. It mounts to the base, to the platform. We call it the platform, I guess, the frame platform. What do we call that here? We call that platform. We call this part the platform. Um, so, mounts to the platform on on four inch spacing uh, on multiples of four four inch inter call it four, four inch interval hole spacing so when we design the power cube the, when designing power cube consider mounting to platform in other words we're going to have to put holes in the bottom of the power cube Or we can just put like little holders on a platform so the power cube just comes in and it's not even attached. Well, it has to be attached. You got to bolt it down or it's going to fall off when you're going down a hill or something. So, bolt hole pattern for the power cube. What else about the power cube? The main thing is going to be how the loader arms fit around it because um, somehow they have to fit. Um, so loader arm geometry, that's that's going to be the next critical thing. There's power cube mounting. Um, what's the order of this design process? If, if people are working independently on the different parts, they're drawing up the parts. The, the start is that we uh, cut up the as small parts as possible. So we have to break it down into break each of these into as small parts as possible, and and have everybody go at it. So the last main main module is going to be the loader arms. Oh, the other some of the other things to consider power cube requirements is that the hoses like hose routing to control valve because we're going to have control valve plus motors has to be feasible. Uh, other things would be like the the exhaust is not blowing on the operator. some practical considerations the starter the pull cord starter pull cord or switch starter switch I like the pull cord because it's simpler you don't have to worry about a starter 
um, and it starts right up this engine at least starts right up start pull quarter switch is accessible so that if you want to yank on it you're not hitting your hand into a frame what else uh, just basic geometry considerations they're primarily taken care of in the power cube design itself um, like the different geometrical things we've considered already about the power cube so that's I think that's about it oh wait I did this one instead of this so let me reverse these so loader arms loader arm requirements They are mounted as far back as possible for center of gravity. Like if you're lifting a heavy thing, you want you want to be able to lift as much as possible. They're mounted as far back as possible. to be engineered for their geometry like they have to be a pretty specific geometry so we're, we want to use something like use maybe 2.5 inch hydraulic cylinders uh, use they have curl on the curl cylinders on loader attachment plate on attachment quick attach plate so it'll be a quick attach plate uh, so quick it has a quick attach plate for rapid mounting of implements and we should go to possibly the Bobcat standard So we can Google that, what that is. I think what we want to do at this time to be interchangeable, like if we make this machine happen and we want it to spread, it would be useful that any other standard implements that you buy at the store can fit on this machine. And that's, they are typically attached using the Bobcat standard. It's a very popular standard that's used. It's a certain geometry of the quick loader, quick, quick attach plate that allows quick interchange of, of different implements. So I think we want to consider that at this point because um, it's a standard interface. Uh, we could possibly do two because um, like two modules. One one quick attach plate would be the Bobcat standard and another one would be just a standard uh, hull plate like we're using like the, the platform. Uh, both allow uh, different types of connections. The Bobcat standard allows for rapid if you do the bolt holes. That's a little longer because you have to put on a bolt and tighten down a bolt. That's not as easy but it would get you more flexibility for attaching all kinds of weird weird implements or just things that you don't even have an implement like if you even don't have a quick attach uh, mechanism for something you can definitely get bolts through something and make like a jerry-rigged uh, attachment for some weird thing that you're doing so the whole plate is is also a good idea it's what we have on a let's see on a if you look at the last tractor here these ones oh yeah this one here that's what I mean by this quick attach plate it just has holes in it so that you can attach anything through the holes which could be a wide variety of things and this crazy freak here yeah, we drove that around a little bit. It wasn't really practical. It didn't have good balance. Um, and the lo yeah, just the loader is... You got to have the proper geometry when you're working with this here. So when you look at this, this looks kind of cute but and has the tracks, but it's so heavily front-loaded. It's just like too big and bulky for what we want to do. It had the cab at the front. 
drove that around a bit, but we just took it apart. It wasn't really super functional. But we did did do this thing where we had two power cubes on it. One was the main power cube, and the second one we just hung it on the back using those uh, 4 by 4 tubing power cubes, which right now will be much, much lighter. And that's why we were considering the four addition of four of them. But this is a really unengineered, just really brute force way to do it. And, and you know, it worked. You can put things on this, but... The geometry considerations, it's being off balance so much, it wasn't practical. So, uh, going back to this, loader arms, what we want to do for the loader arms is do a pr very precise geometry which allows us to have the highest lift and the largest weight, weight carrying capacity. And so, like, minimum 500 pound load capacity. I mean, that's not a lot really um, I mean minimum we should probably go for like maybe 800 but uh, probably uh, maybe 800 or something we'll see basically by the center of, of geometry center of weight what what basically you can lift up because the cylinders could do much more they're probably gonna be able to do thousands like 8,000 or something for a 2.5 inch cylinder but you'll just tip forward if you have something too heavy so it's it relies on how much how your weight is distributed through the machine so 500 pound load capacity uh, and carefully worked out geometry so we're gonna have to do that by CNC cutting or cutting somehow not not the straight tubes we can use maybe some parts of a straight tube for a part but but the geometry has to be pretty precise otherwise the machine is all out of control and not really functional. So carefully designed loader geometry. Um, so that's that. And um, now let's just talk last thing before we wrap up here. Uh, let's duplicate the slides. So, so the next question is how do we go from this one if we make this 16 horsepower thing how do you go readily from that to a larger tractor? So scaling. Uh, we talked about that before. So the main question is, how do you go from the 16 horsepower to 64 horsepower tractor? Well, probably for a small machine like that, if we're making it very small, you don't want to put more than one power cube on it if it's a walk behind. So keep it at 16. Uh, but but with the power cube itself, make the power cube um, the version where you have the four outlets with four hydraulic outlets to support four engines, four engine pumps, engines pumps. So what we were talking about before, uh, which we didn't build in the current power cube because the current the 17.08 right here that just has the tank we didn't worry about putting in other other openings to that because this this power cube is going off to uh, that's going to Utah where they don't need other outlets they just need to run the brick press so there's just one there but when you build the next iteration build it with four support for four and let's go back to if we go to the tractor construction set 2017. Uh, let's go to the first meeting. I think we talked more about the scaling in the first meeting. So let's just uh, go through those slides there about the different ideas. Like we talked about, okay, well, how do you go from one unit like this? You know, this is we're saying one frame, etc., to multiple ones. Well, what would be the easiest thing to do? One way to do, I would say, for the large tractor, we could probably do like this version right here, articulated version. That would be an easy thing to do. Um, in which case, if you have articulated steering like that, you wouldn't necessarily need to have steering. You wouldn't necessarily need a steering cylinder like right there in the middle if you have control over the four tracks 
So I could see an easy implementation of this one. You basically double up the width of the platform, use the same tracks, just extend the shaft. So basically replace the shaft and um, instead of using the, the thin frame, you, you do a wider frame with two power cubes um, side to side. So I would lean towards this kind of a configuration and see if it's workable to create something like this um, in that weekend workshop. Why? Because you can divvy this, this, because it's symmetric, the front and back are pretty much identical. What we can do there is have two teams, like, so if we start with like one single frame unit, then maybe like even the first day we can have another team just built just welding up the wider frame so that when we're done with the uh, experimenting with a single frame tractor we can put two together and two more together so so two teams can be working one can be working on the front and one can be working on the back uh, totally in parallel so the workflow would be to build up the power cubes build the frames i mean all those the track modules tracks um, loader arms, loader arms would have to be different and uh, the idler could be, uh, the tensioner could be the same in both cases, the narrow and wide machine. So that's one way to go. I mean, doable and let's see how practical that is. But the nice thing about this, so if we go to this, yeah, yeah, can't really do that. Yeah. Uh, so if we go to yeah, just enlarging this a little bit. If we go to this design here, um, the nice idea is the parallel ability of doing the one section and the other section, like totally scalable. So, so say we build the the single frame version. Yes, great. Um, we could, I mean, possibly the best, when I think about this, possibly the best thing to do th through that three-day workshop would be to design and build five power cubes and uh, then keep the one single one, just keep that as is, and then, then other teams in parallel just build up the, the double version. And the double version itself could be a vehicle in itself. Like, we can see how the weight balance is so that if you have just the front section, it's usable, but it's also usable if you have the front and back section. So this is actually interesting. It's like the, I think I showed that, did I show that here? There was another document where I showed the, the two bulldozers pulling one another. And this is a similar concept. Can that be practical? So if you need less power, you can use like, well, for a small application, you just use a single, single power cube, 16 horsepower. For larger, you do 32 horsepower with the double version and then the quadruple version for 64 horsepower. And once again, the advantage with the tracked units, if you have independent wheel drive on each track, you might be able to not have a steering cylinder right here. Because typically what happens for turning is you use two cylinders, one on each side, and you basically bend the machine so you can steer. And maybe we can actually do that without even though so which which would make this this very very simple to implement in practice so that's interesting now what what are some other options so here's like this large tractor with track steering so we talked about this so maybe going even uh, wider on a single frame so you'd put the four power cubes on on this thing so this would be even wider um i'd prefer maybe we do this one uh, it's kind of neat to see going from one tractor to a double one to a quadruple one that's that you can reconfigure as opposed to this one if you got four you can't just split this into a, a two power cube version so this might be interesting we'll see uh, and both like if we do the solar power cube version basically a solar panel with a small power cube we can drive either the small one or the big one it's just how fast they're going to go. They're going to go very, very slow, but still, like if you talk about autonomous garden tractoring, say a weeder or pulling behind you like chicken tractors or pig tractors uh, that pretty much graze on a whole field, uh, you wouldn't need fencing then for them. That's the advantage there, but for the, no fencing for the animals, you just pull them around in a cage. That's the kind of application you can do with a little solar power cube.
Uh, so you're running 100% off solar power. And then when you need the tractor for other things, you can just turn on an engine and um, let the animals graze in at one spot for a little bit. And then when you're done with your task, you, you connect this, the power cube, solar power cube back up so they can the tractor can keep, keep dragging the, the chicken or piglet tractors. So just some applications. But yeah, I, I would lean towards this. Now, how do we go from if we design this version here, so our Toro Dingo style kind of a thing, does this lend itself to scaling? Yes, absolutely, because we're using the very heavy shafts so it can readily be scaled. So it's very, very heavy duty uh, and still viable for a small application. I mean, that heavy weight in a very small garden tractor is really good because that means you're going you're gonna to be able to lift more. And how exactly um, is this all going to turn out? is all up to us so we have uh, the two next months to design this and build it and uh, what I want to do is distribute all this work to the different people through the team so let's see who do we have here um, Roberto let's see um, let's see can you can you uh, access the pictures yet or no you're not able to do those Okay, let me try the link again. How about that link? Yes, now no, I can. Okay. Well, let me just change that link in the document there. Uh, where is that document? So the reference. Uh, see pictures. So see pictures for reference. So that sounds good. So that's the basics. We can start dividing the different tasks to different people and uh, Saturday we'll get to doing this uh, actually in real life. Now, I mean, what we want to do, uh, I'll just c begin copying and, and divvying out small tasks. So if we go to the dev log, um, if I just copy and paste everybody's name into the document and we want to divide this up and I talked to Joseph about kind of like following up with people on if they're clear about tasks and and um, how we pretty much keep everybody on track so if there's a clear task list for for the tractor we can have people owning those things and and we can follow up with people and so forth just uh, standard stuff Uh, so here on the scaling part, try the the articulated 32 horsepower each. The articulated two times the 30 horsepower, 32 horsepower each tractor. Uh, so that's that'll be the preferred configuration. There, uh, this one here. I'm just gonna. Copy and paste. Yep, so let's let's try that. Um, Scale up the frame, scale up the length of axes, 
of shafts. Besides that, everything else is just about identical. So scale up the frame, scale up the length of the axes. We're just widening it out, putting two power cubes next to one another. Um, but that's like the main difference between between those. So we'll see if it works. We didn't talk much about wheel units, but we should we should design a wheel unit into this system so that um, when we do this testing, we can actually uh, attach wheels instead of instead of the tracks as well. That would be a good good experiment. So it's definitely something we can do during during the project during the three days if if the stuff is just coming together like like we wanted to um, let's talk about roll division so slide duplicate slide roll division oops Okay, so what I'd like to like to have people do is is uh, sign up for a task. We we broke up the thing into different parts, but to be more specific, there's there's lots of very concrete items to do. So, uh, I mean, as far as the CAD itself goes, there's the universal rotor. I mean, the the specific CAD tasks that are parts that can go into the part library. So basically, what we want to do is mix and match people to a part each here so let's go with universal rotor uh, we have some of the universal rotor um, uh, yeah universal ro well anyway universal rotor Uh, then do the motor plus sprocket. There's a sprocket itself. I mean that's that's a derivative motor motor plus sprocket is the motor itself plus sp sprocket. So motor. Um, there's 8 inch idler there's a 12 inch idler I mean there's the power cube so in a power cube uh, we've got all the parts for it well most of the parts we need to finish that up but the power cube integration still has to happen so there could be a few people working on that but we got a lot of those parts and I think some people are wrapping up those parts so we have to pretty much get clear on um, just finishing up the power cube completely um, and then there's the uh, with four outlets there's the there's just the the no hydraulic power cube, no hydraulic reservoir power cube. Tensioner, tensioner, 
would consist of the ten tensioner shaft there's the idler and then there's the shaft whatever how you do it and then there's the actual clamp down so that could be broken down into a few parts we can maybe uh, specify that a little more um, there's shafts here they're simple uh, the bearings themselves are a part that we want to have there's an idler there's bearings there's bolts so I mean the idler is a derivative that's an assembly it consists of um, ba the bearing the one and seven eighths inch bearing there's a three inch bearing yes you can kind of like go through the parts that they these all combine to the to the idler there's some bolts um, that all go into the I mean each of these ends up making an idler there's the 8 inch pipe this for example the pipe section and plates the round plate so basically we can get very specific on breaking down each thing into very specific parts and that's what we should do for doing this design sprint. I'll, I'll work on this more I'll just uh, write down all the different different parts as far as I can break this down so we can basically start a whole part library for the Saturday design sprint I'll work on that just basically get a whole spreadsheet of individual parts and then as soon as we have the parts and people can go to the level of um, putting them into the assemblies and the, and the final assembly the, the overall assembly so I think we can quit here but everybody just please review this and uh, study up the, the former documents on the tractor and the tracks uh, but I think we're pretty good on that the main thing to design is the loader arm geometry like where they go and etc so we can start with uh, a rough frame so platform I mean platform should be clear um, we just have to decide where to mount the other things so yeah yeah so people uh, please review this hope to see you on on uh, Saturday's design sprint 12 to 4 p.m. on Saturday and if people are people who haven't finished the parts for the power cube please do that uh, we have to wrap that up we want to have a complete model of the power cube for the uh, for the tractor here uh, the one we can move on to the I mean there's the power cube individual parts but we also have to assemble the one with the multiple outlets so that it's all good for the track the the 64 horsepower tractor so okay well I think with this said uh, let's uh, continue this on Saturday please uh, review this work and get started on any of the parts if you can if you have enough information and we'll talk again pretty soon so uh, any any questions here Roberto or anything or Yeah, could you share the, the power cube photos? Oh, I see. Um, yeah, let me do that. So this is tractor. Were they not shared before, or you just you missed the link, or was it a bad link? Yeah, I have the same er error. The okay. Okay, so let's. So all those ones, the tractor and just a couple of power cube pictures are. Oh no, no. Let's see. So let's look at the albums. So there's a separate album for tractor seventeen ten, and there's the power cube seventeen point oh eight. So let me share that. Make sure the sharing on that is correct. Uh, share. Sharing options should be shared. So let me just put that link in. Uh, 
power cube 17.08 pictures okay see if that works for you now on page six Okay, that's good. Yeah, so first set, anything else? Uh, no, no, not to me. Okay, sounds good. I know you've got, you're working on, um, on instructional. How's that going, coming along there? Well, I'm, <laughs> I was looking into the, um, Cut forums. Yeah. And I see that some people was trying to to import parts into the assembly. We sent the assembly to workbench. Mm -hmm. They were. The, there is one one person who who tried to to import parts, but um, I mean importing more than one visible object and I'm curious because maybe we, we, we could use <coughs> that code to to be able to import assemblies or modules into the into the MasterCAD so I'm, I'm investigating that mm -hmm. and maybe I could, I could find something interesting okay um yeah what I would say maybe maybe for now I would uh, suggest just if we focus on just what we know already because I mean we're gonna be discovering new things forever <laughs> so I want to make sure that we get this thing out to to our team as soon as possible so maybe just focus on what we know already with the simp simpler stuff like level two like we talked about Maybe like don't I wouldn't say maybe don't worry too much about that for now because that video is already going to be pretty complicated enough. Um, would that sound good? Yeah, maybe I I think we could we could use the the first workflow using the merge and because use I the, the level two for I mean the the workflow that I'm I'm working on. Mm -hmm. It's it's not. A, it's not a simple procedure. I mean, it it could be difficult to follow for normal people. Huh. I don't know how to say that. Yeah. But I don't know if you if you if you saw the 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 script, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot of. I I think that it's it's much more complicated that the. The previous workflow that was merging parts and just assembling in a random way. Mm -hmm. So, if if you if you want now some speed for the for the teamwork, I mm. think we, we should continue with that workflow until we we have a good a, a better replacement. So, are you thinking that altogether the the assembly two workflow is just really too complicated. Like you're, th but what would be the replacement at that point? I mean, so I mean, so what has changed? I mean, you just thought about it and what it it's not working as well as you think. Because I mean, I know you are very excited about it. Is it just yeah, it the difficulty works, level? It works great, but I I mean, it's it's for uh, one person working on on the doc document. I mean, I I don't know if if. Many people could follow the, the, the procedure. Yeah, I, I know if I if I I can I can I can, I can do um, a video showing the exact steps, but it's um, hmm. I don't know if, if people is going to to take their time. To, yeah, to do this the, the exact procedure because it's not as as simple. Hmm. Yeah. 
but right. I, 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 ca I can do the video anyway, but um, I, that's because I, I was trying to find another approach for the assembly process. Mm -hmm. Because the, that, that point of ma uh, be able to, to make modules um, separately from the master cut and then in, be able to import them that that's that I think that it's more important at, at this point that the, the 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 new features that we can we can gain using the assembly tool workbench. Uh huh. I don't know if you agree with that. You you're thinking that the ability to have more people participate just with a simple merge is probably going to get us better results at this point. Yeah, yeah, because. I, I, I saw that with the extruder assembly uh, work, um, more people were, were, were able to, to contribute uh, making their assemblies and then we just can merge the, the, the whole the, work, the whole machine. I, 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 I know that it's not the, the better right result, but it, it worked. Yeah, yeah, it did work. So, when you merge a whole file, do the separate parts remain in that file? Yeah, right? Sorry, can you repeat? If you merge a whole document, I mean, the merge function appears to get us the, uh, essentially, like the module import, whereas the assembly 2 doesn't get us the module import in that same way, right? Yeah, the only way we can... Uh, import module, modules into the assembly to workbench is using the max assembly option. That what what means that we we only import um, a single part, but that part represents a complete module. Right. In other words, it hides all the detail. Right. Yeah, which was what I didn't like about that workflow. So, like for example, yeah. right now in the brick press. I cannot really work with it like a manual's file because it has the whole parts that when you click on it the whole thing disappears in, instead of showing the individual parts. So yeah. and that's important for for expository work like when you're actually trying to see how something is built. Um yeah, okay. Well no, I mean I agree with that if there's that part where if you just simply merge then then you're just uh, still able to expose all the parts, which is really good. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that. Um, this is about priorities, I think. Yeah. No, I mean you're right. It's 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 right. More people can do that. It's easier. It do, uh, What's the disadvantage of the merge? Because in in the assembly two import, you're able to replace the correct position, right? Merging parts, we can, we, we also can delete a part and just move the new part into the same position. That's not a big deal. Well, that's exactly right. That's what I'm thinking. Like if what, so for example, what we could do, we import an assembly, then put that assembly into place, and then we can save that assembly and overwrite the old file such that the new assembly is in the correct position in the overall file. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. That's the way we, we work in the, yeah. in the filament window. Yeah, 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 that's right. And I think that's a, that's a very simple concept. Yeah. Um, let's see. So if you when you import an assembly... Is it still easy to move? Like, do you have to then move parts individually, or can you move the whole thing? You you can move the whole thing, the, the whole module. Just you you have to, to select, select all the parts that you want to move. Go to the property panel and into the placement um, property. You have a at the, at the final part of this of that property. You have a, a, a button with three points. I remember. You click on that and that button, and you can change uh, the placement for the for all the selected parts. So, but but what what is important there is that you have to 
to, to mark one, one option, uh, which is to apply incremental changes for the changes. Then you can, you can rotate uh, in the, using the, the axis or, or, or just move along upwards, fine. Huh. Well, it seems like then what you might want to be doing is actually an instructional for that workflow. <laughs> yeah, well, well that, that, that was the, the workflow I was using for, for assembling the, the filament winder. And right. It, it worked. And yeah, hmm. maybe that, that, that could be easier to understand and to use for most of the people. Okay. Well, I agree with that. Okay, so maybe let's do this. Why not? Yeah, if we can move the whole assemblies around, it's and it's easier. I mean, I mean, I believe you because you've done it, and and now you're coming back to me and saying, "Well, I really like this other workflow better." And I know that Emmanuel sa says, "Oh yeah, just do the assembly," but he's a solo warrior right now. He's nobody can do what he does, so so that's not really scalable. So unless everybody goes through that intense learning curve like he has, we're not really able to work together, right? I, yeah, that, that's the main disadvantage of the, of the new workflow. And, and I think that is critical because the point is be able to, to do teamwork. Right, exactly, exactly. But tell me a little bit more about how the teamwork aspect is different. So. You can have all people work on different assemblies you can you, and parts and you can merge them. Whereas before we could only do parts and then one person would have to merge, uh, basically import all within the, within the assembly too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, the main difference that, um, in the assembly two workbench, um, we can only import single parts. So, if someone wants to, to assemble a module or, or the, the whole machine, uh, they, they, uh, he has to to download the MasterCAD and work along uh, into the into what he wants to do. Right. And in the with merging parts and, and assembling in a <laughs> We can still use the the constraints uh, available in the into the assembly to workbench, like you you show in your instructional yeah. video. I remember. I mean, not importing using the the assembly to workbench uh -huh. uh, import tool. Okay. And and we can constrain, we can rotate the parts and in even even modules, mer uh, mo modules with, with which are already assembled. I mean, not fully constrained but just with the with the right position into the into the the screen yeah <laughs> and and we can just move the the, the modules at, until we we or, or to the to the position that we want and and just put together and and do the, the almost the same assembly that we we were able to we are able to do into the assembly to work and Right. Yeah. So there's, yeah, I mean, what you just said is a huge advantage if people can work on assemblies instead of having to download the master CAD and then put work on assemblies in there. And then you get into all the potential conflicts of who's got the master CAD file, right? Yeah. And, 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 and I think the, the, <laughs> the assembly to work, which is still not, um, it's not prepared for, 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 the, for this kind of work, mm -hmm. I, I, I was reading that it is it's been developed, and and maybe we can even ask for for some new feature into the assembly to workbench, and and, and maybe it's, uh, uh, a lot of people w would be willing to to help us, but yeah. until we, we 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 don't have the that development, I think. It's, it, better to continue with the, the previous workflow okay and, okay and also um, oh sorry sorry that's all yeah 
No, I, I think I agree with you. Uh, I think it's clear that, I mean, because of that limited ability to do the import the assemblies, that's very limiting for the team workflow that we have. So, so the advantage of the former workflow is that it's easier and it actually allows us to do more uh, in terms of the assemblies being that that process being easier okay no i think i think we yeah go back to merge level one okay i'd say i'd say so okay well i i'm going to prepare a new script for for that workflow okay and save the last one we'll, we'll come back to it <laughs> when it's when it's time but but i think what it appears is that there's a level one and really what what we were talking about level two and three like two and three have to be there together you can't really have just two you really need three right you mean it thing well the the way where you can manage somehow the conflicts when you're trying to work with the assemblies importing yeah like yeah i mean the git like basically the idea that you don't have the conflicts of people editing like you check out the file because that was yeah. the main issue we were running into yeah um well the point being that I think that the point is maybe let's take that comment back let's let's simplify i think the point is unless there's an effective way to import entire modules we're not ready for assembly yeah right that's the, the point i think that's the bottom line okay we'll keep it as simple as that so yeah let's go back to merge and i, I like it i mean i've done the merge that's works great um and then what we do then is just when we go save the original source files, we save them in the correct position, which is what I, why I talked about a long time ago. Uh, oh, I, I, I don't think that it's a good idea. It's not? Because I, I think that not because um, it, it's, um, I think that it's not necessary because it, to, it's easier just to move some imported piece mm -hmm. to the, the the assembly or the module okay and saving more versions for for each part it, it would be a lot of work and yeah so what would be the the workflow there so there you i mean what if you just want to well typically the workflow is going to be that you update like one part or a couple of parts so yeah that would work you just move those two parts into place right yes we can use the the the, the, the constraints the circular constraints right main constraints and or just the, the placement uh, feature into the property panel what's the placement feature in a property panel um are you in master in, in freecad now uh yeah i'm booting it up file um, when you select a part All right. Okay. Can you select uh, one part or one object? Uh, you see my screen? Uh, let me see. Yeah. Like, like for example, pad or um, grooves. 
Okay. Uh, you have to um, to finish the leading of the path. Okay. Now, okay, and our, uh, now, uh, where is the property panel there? Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I, you can see that, and in, in your screen you can see where you you, you only see place uh, um, the. Yeah. But that 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 is for placement. Okay. Um, so just put the coordinates, or no. that's you, you. You move to the right until you see a, bot, a button. You no no you, you have to yeah yeah move move to the right at the la, at the final of that uh, row. Yeah. You you should you should have a button. Can you see that? I mean, this part, this yeah, one. That, yeah, yeah, that that button. Yeah. You uh, click on that button. No, nothing happens when I let's see. With the three points. Nothing happens there. I'm not getting anything from that button. Okay. Yeah. I, sometimes that that uh, that happens to me all, uh, too, but maybe it's it's for the the. The part we are trying to, to work. Can you maybe just create a, a, a cube into the, the file? Yeah, let's let's see this other one here. Uh, like this one. How about? Interesting if you can open a, a, a MasterCAD or a module, maybe the the filament winder. Okay. Let's so take you a look can at see that. How how to move a complete module? Okay. So would I go to the part library? Master index or here? Should I go to here? This is filament. Uh, no, I think you have to go to the filament winder wiki page. It's another. Okay. So which one do I want? See the uh, the master card or the final assembly or something like that. Yeah. We want that. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, in the tree view, you can just select uh, what you want to to move. Okay, like say that one. Okay, say spooler. Yeah. Just um, select the folder. Okay, say the spooler. Okay. I gotta open it up completely. And, and select 
all the all the parts, not the folders, only. That will activate the, the placement yeah. property. And, and now you, you just click and... Okay. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a, the, the place. Okay. But you have to, to extend the, the, the placement panel to see the, the one important feature is, is below. Apply yeah, then, there. Apply incremental changes to object. You have to mark the. the uh huh. Option. And what does that do? Yeah. That uh, allows you to 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 do changes, particular changes, maybe in the in the rotation angle or or the placement, the translation there. But. Mhm. Mm uh, the change, uh, all the indicators, all, all the parameters returns to zero after uh, applying applying that change. Uh huh. For example, do whatever you want. Maybe move 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 the the module along one of the axes or okay, yeah. the, the module. All right. You can choose an, an axis, uh, X, Y, or, or Z. Yeah. And then, uh, put an angle. The center, I, I, I don't recommend to... I, I, oh, well, I, I'm not... Uh, All right. Never, I, I never use the center options there. Yeah. Just the translation and the axis and angle. Yeah, I mean, this looks good. I mean, you can select the whole whole assembly and just move it around. That's good. That's what we need. Then you can uh, just apply and okay uh, at the last, uh, at the final part of the placement yeah. panel. You you have to apply the changes. You have to click on the apply button and uh, then okay. I yeah, think. there we go. Okay, and if I selected the folders, that would not work. No, no. I, in my case, I, c I cannot use the placement. Oh yeah, that's right. Option. By selecting the folder. Right. Yeah, if I say I selected that three, yeah, it blanks it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's it. So maybe what we do is, is foc refocus on, yeah, let's just get a good d documentation, good instructional on this whole process. And you should use this exactly as the case to show it with. Yeah. Maybe, yeah? Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we'll scrap that for now. So that, that makes it more simple. And uh, we'll go back to a little bit of simpler technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do it. it. It will work. It's just a different workflow. And it's simple to understand. So. Yeah, all that. Okay. All right. We'll do that. So... Basically, the idea is that we have to get everybody on a team up to this level and then say everybody can do that. We can talk about other things, but we got to get everyone to this this level. Mm -hmm. That's like the basic yeah. level. Uh -huh. the further work. Yep. Yep. Okay. I agree with you. So that's that's pretty good. So let's let's finish here then. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. So continue on that. And um They'll be good. Uh, like as soon as you have a a script for that that process, just let me know so that that we can go through that, and then we'll publish that video instead. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. Well, that sums it up. So we'll, we'll apply it to the tractor as our case in point. So that's that's important, and then everybody will be doing that, and we'll be pretty effective at doing it. So that. The next step is generate all the parts and we can start importing them and making assemblies ind independently and then we save both the individual parts and the assemblies and then import them into the final CAD. So as long as we have a good master part index and a good part library we'll be able to work rapidly on the tractor. Sounds, sounds like that. Alright?
Yeah, all right. Excellent. Sounds good. So thank you. We'll uh, finish this meeting here, and we'll see you on, hope to see you on Saturday, noon to 4, working on the tractor. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.